Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Uh, I've got a different screen. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, wow, um, hello, Salam. We have quite a few today. I just want to. Um, I'll just get you the screen. I'm going to explain, inshallah. Um, share a screen. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah, we can see the screen. Okay, alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about zakah. Let me just put the Facebook as well, because I promised the Facebook. And go live. Start live broadcast. Um, the Facebook, Bismillah ar the Facebook is not going to see the, the screen. There is a, a scale I put here on the screen, uh, which is um, divided into um, two things. One of it, um, the things you need to pay the cow on. Um, And the things which is no zakah on it. So the zakah on uh, things divided into five main things. You pay zakah on um, dhahab and fidda, gold and silver, or equivalent in the uh, banknotes money. Uh, you pay zakah on, uh, uh, they call it rakais, which is uh, all the metals and oil and uh, things you know get from underground and you pay um, zakah on uh, agricultural products you pay zakah on cattle which is uh, fed by free grass in the countryside which is probably in Britain doesn't exist or something um, and you pay zakah on uh, trade uh, goods. So five things, just uh, plain money, plain money, gold, silver, or equivalent in banknotes, dollar, sterling, French, French franc, whatever. You pay the car on uh, things you get from underground or treasure you found, which I don't know many of us have actually uh, discovered any oil or whatever under a new garden or something. Um, you pay the car on agricultural things, you pay the car on uh, animals you look after, and you pay the car on trade. Ahmad, have a question? So, so yes, this, this is, I wasn't very clear on this, and uh, you know, I've looked at Zakat Foundation. Uh, th things have uh, changed nowadays. So, when you say you pay uh, Zakat on trade, so imagine if I was a trader, yeah, I have a, I don't know, warehouse full of uh, 100 pounds worth of goods. Yeah. I'm obliged to pay zakat on that. But the profit I get from the um, uh, goods, I take it. So whatever profit I take, I'll have to pay zakat again. So it's... it's, it's no, no. No. We, no? You, you, uh, when we come to um, things which is traded, suppose you are a clothes trader, you buy, you buy and sell uh, suits and shirts and trousers and uh, dresses and whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Every year you own all these money you put in uh, uh, clothing mm -hmm. uh, plus the money you already own. 
we have mm. to the uh, you do the inventory every every year see how much goods you have how much it cost you or worth in that time if you want to buy it um, and then you add what you have saving and you pay zakat on both together so you see on that spot of time let's say do your zakat on the day 20 of ramadan every year so in that point of time how much you have and then you pay on both so that's what they call the uh, tijara, things which is owned to sell like if you have uh, cars you own the thing is you have to have the uh, full ownership of it um, if you buy and um, you pay like you know only 10 percent or 20 percent then you don't actually own all of it you own because the car you take from your money can you see me here no? you take from all your money you take out of it your money so the money you have this is why when they when they come to loans um if you lend somebody ten thousand pounds and you lend it to him two years ago it's not with you to take out of it this is the majority of the scholars say it's not with you when you take out what you have you put all in a in a pot and you take out of it the zakat you, you got it is it clear no 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 no, no. no. Or, or can i can i add something yeah in other, in other words there's no zakat on the profit you make when you sell your products and there's no zakat on the sales of the products you make it's the cash you have left for the whole year yeah yes and um, the only the only um, exemption is um vegetables and fruits and uh, agriculture now the scholars hanafi says you have to give zakat on every agriculture you produce on the time of produ producing collecting it the hasad that could be twice a year could be three times a year so every time you take that you collect your crops you give zakat on it according to shafi Malki, and hanbali only agriculture which you store which will come later things which could be stored for more than a year like a grain and maize and uh, uh, and uh, barleys and cotton and things you know you store for more than one year you pay the cow on it if it's stayed for one year you owned it for one year so um when you when you collect it you give the cow on it because it could be stored for one year so the only immediate the cow you give is on agriculture when you Allah said in the Quran give the share the zakah share out of it on the day you collect your crops so if we leave uh, it'll come back to it inshallah when we come to it so when they take about talk about um, the cattles and highlight it here you can't see on uh, facebook my friend it's uh, it would be recorded and stored you could uh, go back to it inshallah after we store it on uh, youtube and facebook so you will have it um, with the uh, pictures inshallah on facebook um so if you have five camels or more you give zakat if you have 30 cows or more and the same in all mazayib hanafi amalki hanbali um and shafi if you have cattle let me know i'll give you more details i don't assume many of you <laughs> <laughs> if you have gold and silver you give two and a half percent if you have more than 85 grams um, last year and you still have it this year last Ramadan you still have it or more this Ramadan and you only give on the amount you had last Ramadan so if you had last Ramadan um, three ounces of gold um, and you still have the three you, you bought five more during the year you have eight now you only pay the cow on the three you had last Ramadan when you have uh, sterling and dollar and Swiss franc or whatever, uh, you need to calculate how much um, gold are they are worth. If they are worth 
when I gave the first fatwa beginning of Ramadan, it was 4,083 uh, pounds. The gold, unfortunately, went up now. So if you have 4,150, which is better for you, if you had 4,150 last Ramadan, um, in sterling pounds, and you still have 4,150 or more this Ramadan, you gave zakat on the 4,150 only, which you owned last Ramadan. So that's, you pay on last year's uh, owned money. You don't pay on what you own now. You obey what you owned last year and you still have it. Even if it dropped during the year. So if it dropped during the year to 2,000 and, and, and uh, went up to um, 4,150 during the year, uh, now, like you know, last week became 4,150, um, when do you collect your, when you calculate your zakah? That's point of time you pay. So that's for uh, gold and silver and equivalent of banknotes money. And that's the same on the, all the majahib. All the mazahib are the same. When it comes to women jewelry, only Mazhab Hanafi asks you to pay. The rest of the mazahib, they say it's matar, something you enjoy, and uh, it's the women wear and change and things, we so don't pay zakah on it. Obviously, it was a reasonable amount. One of my teachers, Wahbir Zuhaili, he said he was teaching in the university in the Gulf, and a lady asked him, should she pay the cow on the gold and silver she had? He said, how much? She said, around seven, six, seven kilograms. He said, yes to her. Because no woman wears seven kilograms gold at any time. So he, uh, he said, yes, you pay the cow. So obviously, he is more like people storing their money in gold. I wouldn't advise people store their money in jewelry because it loses both when you buy it and when you sell it, because uh, when they make it, they charge you for the make, and it could be sometimes double the price, and they charge you a lot of commission. If it's pure gold, 24 carats, then it's definitely it's, uh, is both for storage and things most of the time. Um, but jewelry usually bought for uh, decoration to wear, for women to wear. The three madahib says no. And they said, Aisha, her niece was having, you know, Jewelry and she never paid the cow on it because it's not obligatory. So that's out of the question. And the same, um, the silver, if you own more than 595 grams, which is two and a half percent. But the problem is that with the silver, the percentage of payment is higher than percentage of payment of gold. Because nowadays, they used to have like a the 12, I think it was 12 ounces of gold, one ounce, and 12 ounces of silver equal to one ounce of gold, then became 17. Now it's 109. With the one ounce of gold, you buy 109 ounces of silver. But if you have silver, you pay more than when you have gold. And that's a puzzle. I couldn't find anybody to tell me what's, why, why that's the difference. If you have a grain, rice, beans, storable uh, goods, um, agricultural product, uh, you pay 5% if you water it and 10% if um, you don't, if it's um, watered by rain only. Now in Hanafi, any amount you pay, the cow on it, because not the, stated in the Quran, give the zakah on the day you collect the crops. The rest of the Mizahib, they say it has to be more than uh, 623 kilograms. Trade goods, you do your inventory and they all say you pay 2.5% on what you own. So you own this amount of your inventory. So you might be selling oil and um, butter and uh, groceries or whatever. Um, you don't pay, if it's grocery, you don't pay on the grocery. Uh, you don't pay on uh, fruit, vegetables, which is soft fruit and vegetables. You only pay on things which is stored, can be stored for more than a year. So when you come to your inventory, um, if you have a grocery shop, you need to see which of, which of it is actually storable or which is not. Because five, six days, if you don't sell the banana, you throw it away. If you don't sell the tomato within a week or two, you throw it away. So it's, uh, 
and there's no zakah on it. So they don't uh, say zakah payable on it. Um, no agreement on the following. Fresh fruit and vegetables, as I said. Hanafi say you have. Um, Shafi say only pay on dates and raisin. And so does Hanbali. Um, sorry, uh, Malki. Hanbali say you pay nothing on the soft, fresh fruit and vegetables, even dates. Um, while if it's, um, if it's dates and raisin, you pay if you are following Mazak Shafi or Malki. Precious stones, no zakah. All mazahib, no zakah. You might have thousands or millions of of um, of uh, diamond. You don't pay zakah. Dr. Dr. Ghanem. Yeah. So just, just wanted to uh, get uh, some clarification for the last point you mentioned. So, I mean, some, my understanding one, was... One, uh, precious uh, stones? No, no, fresh fruits. fruits yeah, and fresh fruits, fruits, yeah. So, um... I mean, uh, like somebody owns um, a cooking com like a, a company. So he's got lots of chicken and spices and uh, lots of things. So we, we were having a class. So the Sheikh told us that on that one. In that case, he will have to calculate all what he has got, all the chicken and all the spices and everything. And then he will calculate the amount of Say, for example, he has already made a million um, dishes which he is going to sell. So he will calculate that as well and just pay the zakat on both of the things. So that's how he will calculate need, that inventory. Yes. Yeah. If you want to follow Madhab Hanafi, you need to break it down. Because even Madhab Hanafi doesn't say you pay on chicken. Uh, he doesn't say you pay on... Uh, uh, on um, what you buy to sell, like fruit, vegetables, you pay when you collect it. It's, it's, it's more the farmers who pay than you pay. So you buy, you buy the fruits and vegetables, it doesn't stay with you. For no, but, that's your inventory, but that's your inventory of your business. Because you are... Yeah, inventory you exclude, you have to break it down in your uh, shop. Things which you own and could be stored for a year, you pay for it. Things which you cannot store for a year, that's a rough, a rough uh, rule, you don't pay. Because you're not the farmer who actually uh, collected his crops on the day. You bought it uh, to sell it. It might not survive. The farmer, when uh, he could leave it on, on, the, on the trees or on the things, and it will last a bit longer. While you yourself, um, it's not storable, you don't pay. So this is, when you go to the inventory, you need to break it down. The things which are storable for a year, you pay. But if you are a farmer, what, what they used to do in Syria, they used to have a basket outside the farm. So every day, you find a lot of fruit there and vegetables for people to take. Because he collected his crops, he took it to the market to sell it, and he leave the part of the cow outside for people to take. And because... He wouldn't store it and, and deliver it because it takes a lot of um, effort and, and might corrupt it. Then he, they leave it, leave it outside the farm. This is what they do in Damascus. When I was there, they used to be um, like, you know, this is the cow food. They leave it there. And people pass the farm and collect and take. Um, it's very it's difficult to store and then distribute. This is why they do it straight on the farm. Yeah, I mean, so some one, farmers. Sorry, yeah, I was just uh, uh, going to ask one qu a quick one, and I believe this dates and raisin uh, can be expanded to other things. It's not just dates and raisins. But because there is a hadith, they took it because of the hadith. All all the zakar ruled by the numerous hadith mentioned, so every one of them rely on a hadith. When you don't have a hadith, then you go back to the uh, basic rules. Basic rules if it's storable for a year or more because you have the howl, the past. You have the howl. If you are a farmer, you collect your crops, you give on the day, Yawma Hasadihi, when you collect it, on the day you collect your crops. Because it's the so, idea is you give fresh, straight. Yeah. If you store uh, it, you spoil it. So, Dr. Ghanam, I, my understanding, humbly, are very strict about uh, by for using the hadith. So, why they haven't? Um, 
mention that. This is why this is why uh, Hanafi take everything, everything, five to ten percent. While if you see the screen here now, the yeah. Shafi'i add dates and raisins, yeah. and the Prophet said you give the car on uh, grapes when you collect um, as fresh and still not become raisin because you can make it raisin. And whoever takes it, either he eats it or change it into raisin. While Maliki, they say dates and oil. They don't take raisins because they say raisins, it's um, by the time you um, going to give it the car and things could be spoiled and uh, could be crushed or whatever. So they don't add the the raisin, they add oil instead. The oil they don't add in the, the, the hambari, they don't add at all, dates or raisin or oil. While Hanafi, everything. Hanafi is more, and Hanafi more strict also with the gold and silver, if you noticed here. And the woman has to pay uh, zakah on uh, her stored jewelry. Um, and sometimes they make exemptions, say the one she wears on her neck and, and dress, um, she doesn't, the one she stores, she pay. While the rest of the Mazahab, they say no, she doesn't pay. And the jewelry, where's the jewelry here? Yeah, women jewelry. Only Hanafi say. While the rest of the Mazahab, they say this is Mata, this is part of your house. It's like cl her clothing. She changed her dresses, she changed her jewelry, she changed her, her uh, hair, line, hairstyle, whatever. So they take it as one go. Precious stone, they all the same. There's no, uh, and I didn't know actually when I was back in you know Syria why you don't pay on your diamond and sapphire things. Until I came to this country and my wife had a necklace with some uh, diamond uh, stones on it. The diamond was 5.2 carats, which is thousands of pounds. They paid us nothing. When we sold it, they paid us nothing. It was just. They bought only the gold. Then the, um, um, the um, uh, diamond stones, they didn't pay us anything. I would say, how is that thing? They said, this is the way it is. If you want us to sell it for you, we could put it on the um, shop window. If it sells, we take a commission. If it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. So this is the way it is. They, 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 for the jeweler, they, they don't take it as value. In fact, in, in Morocco, he just pulled the stone with the knife and threw it on the floor. He didn't care about it. He said, I'm buying the gold from you. The stone have no value to me. So this is perhaps this is why there is no um, zakah on it. All the mazahib, all the mazahib said. Personally used items also, your house, your donkey, your car, your uh, uh, tools, everything you use, whether to work and make money or whether to enjoy, there's no zakah. Only Hanif, Abu Hanifa said the horses. The horses, you pay the cow on it. While the rest, they said, uh, no, you don't pay the cow on any of their own. And again, if you want to pay, uh, yeah. Sorry, just a very quick one. Again, uh, so the precious stones we are talking about, if you have got it uh, for your personal use, but if you have got it for business, then you will pay the cow on it. So that will come into your inventory then. Yeah, that's what come out of Tijara. If it's, uh, if it's owned to sell. And that will be added to its houses. If you buy houses to sell, that's your money. You buy houses, they're selling houses, you buy houses and sell it and on daily basis. So on one point, how much you own, could be 10 houses, could be 10 millions, you pay the county. When it comes to renting houses, it's not a road tijara, the house is not up for sale. It's the house is rented, and you pay the car on the rent you get if the rent stay with you for a year. Many people live on the rent, so they get the rent, they spend it. By next year, yes, they have three houses, but there's no money because they use the house to live on um, the rent. They live on the rent, they pay nothing. Um, yeah, any question? I mean, uh, again, for the houses you mentioned, um, so my understanding is land has got no zakah. Yes, the money you are earning from that land, like the rent you mentioned, depends you pay on that. But, depends uh, on the, yeah, the land depends on whether you buy the land to sell the land. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. even if you if, even if you uh, buy the land to sell, you don't pay it on the land itself. 
unless you sell it and then the cash you get the cash in hand then you pay the car on that but there not is, to sell yeah, it yeah there is a, there is a lot of um, views about houses and lands uh, because um, the land could be there for 10 years and not sold so some mm. yes said as you say they they said um, you don't pay the car on it and the same for houses, they get into dispute with that also. Because houses, it could, the house could stay two or three years without being sold. Why are you going to pay? And you don't have any cash to pay the car on it. So they say, no, you don't actually pay. This is why the disagreement, because of the physicality. If people buy houses and sell it, you know, buy five, six houses every year and sell them, uh, then it's their Arud um, Tijara, their inventory, the houses. And, and this is why when, when it is, um, when the mashayikh, when the scholars give fatwa, they give fatwa on case by case basis. They don't generalize because everyone has different uh, uh, situations, mm. different cases. Mm. Uh, Nasser Aziz asking question, yeah, Nasser? Assalamu alaikum, doctor. I wanted to check on the rule on savings, particularly if you have cash savings in the bank. Is mm. it only that you pay zakat on what you've had for the last 12 months, or is it that you pay on the amount that you have now? No, so, for instance, you had last, has, last Ramadan. Ramadan and that 2019, and it, how much money you had, divided by, um, it has to be worth 85 grams of gold, pure gold, 999.9. Uh, and with the silver, it has to be more than. 595 grams so you see how much down uh, 85 grams of gold this is what I said last year uh, how much it was um, uh, how much gold you buy by it and how much gold you buy now by it if you calculate according to gold you buy with it last year it will be 3,000 pounds if you calculate the gold you buy this year it will be 4,150 pounds so you pay as if it is gold. So if it was, at that time, it was 4,150, and you still have 4,150 or more this year, you pay on 4,150. You could have now 10,000, but you only pay on the 4,000. What if you have less? What if you, what have, if you less, have less you this pay, year? Then you... If you have 3,000 okay, so you... this Ramadan, you pay nothing. Okay, so, so it's only on the amount that you had last year and as long as it's the, okay, yeah. and it's a minimum okay, and a minimum value equivalent to 85 grams of gold 85 grams of gold yeah if, if it's less uh, you don't pay if it is more you pay if it's stayed with you and um, borrowed okay. money also the disagreement between the scholars the three of them Hanafi, Mark, Shafri and Hanbali they say you don't pay it's not your money um, only Malki say if it has enough cash to pay back. If you have the cash to pay back, you pay, because you're delaying paying back. So if you have, um, if it's borrowed money, because um, it's not your money, but if you have cash to pay it back, and it's your money, um, according to Maliki. And the last one, uh, loaned money to others, all of them say no. So all of them say, uh, it's not within, your position because as i said at the beginning you have to have all your money in a pot and take out of it but then it's not in your pot it's with that guy you borrowed it to him you don't pay zakat yeah, yeah so that, that there's a confusion here because uh, according to the zakat foundation if you uh, loan some money to someone and you are absolutely certain you're going to get it back then you have to put zakat on it and only and according to maliki Oh, only okay, according okay. To Maliki. Because yeah. the fact the money is with the other guy, you're not investing it. The Prophet ﷺ said about the money of the orphans and the young, um, invest it, don't let zakah eat it. Because if you have a um, hundred ounces of gold and yeah. you pay two and a half ounces every year, mm -hmm. in 10 years you lose 25% in 20 years, by the, by the time the child becomes 21, you lost half his money on zakah. So the Prophet said, invest it, don't let zakah eat it. Otherwise you lose your capital and uh, by, the, by the time he comes at age 20 to collect 
the inheritance, say, yes, your father left you 100 ounce and we paid zakah on it and you have only 50. This is why the money you loan to somebody else, if it was with you, you would have invested it and, be, and would have grown. So you would have, you know, you lend somebody 10,000 pounds and uh, uh, you could have um, bought things with it, invested in shares or stocks or if you bought gold, if you bought gold with it last year, um, it, you would have made um, 30 to 40 percent profit. So uh, this is how the scholar look at it. They have the rules, they put the rules. Um, you collect what you have under your ownership. And this is why I said inventory, when you do your inventory, you might own only 20% of the uh, goods you have. The rest is actually haven't paid yet. It's still owned by other people. So you have to pay them uh, uh, the, um, the value of it. It's not owned by you. Any more questions? Because we finished what I want to talk about. It's finished from this, the... Um, the recap is just um, um, if you have cattle, let me know. We'll tell you how much you pay, and uh, all as I have the same. If you have gold, um, you um, pay two and a half percent if it's above 85 grams, and you measure if you have like Syrian pounds in Syria last year, like Ramadan last year. And you had uh, at that time um, the the British pound was six hundred uh, Syrian pound, and if you had at that time uh, six hundred time four thousands would be some twenty four something million something. Um, now, uh, if you come this year, um, every British pound is equal one hundred one thousand four hundred and fifty Syrian pound. So the Syrians will have to convert the value of the money into gold at that time and see how much in gold. And that's the only way you could pay the car correctly on uh, banknotes, because banknotes lose value. So you might have 50,000 last year, British pound, and it is now uh, worth 40,000 only. So it could easily drop below the Nisab, what we call in Sharia. Yes, the value was within the Nisab. Although you have more money now, Syrian money, but to drop below the Nisab, we don't pay. And we can't, I mean, we don't have time and the mobile is in use for the, I could calculate. So who, who, who sets the Nisab value then? Who sets that? The Nisab is in the Sharia. Mazad the Nisab. That's the, the Nisab, the, it's 20 dinar at that time and 200 dirham. And the scholars converted the, um, the amount of gold in the 20 dinar at that time. They found it 85 grams and converted the amount of silver in the 200 dirham at that time. They found it 595 grams. And that stays. If you have uh, the scale is gold and silver, you are fine all till the day of judgment. So gold and silver um, will remain as money, whether we like it or not. People very quickly yeah. convert into gold and silver whenever there's a doubt about the paper money. Now, yeah. now within the last, sorry, just uh, within the last uh, six months, and the gold went up from 1,000 pounds an ounce to 1,440 pounds today. So it went 44%. Um, in value, so the price of the pound dropped by 44 percent. People will not notice until they go to buy massive purchases like a house or a car or something, they will find the price has gone up. Now, obviously, there's coronavirus and there is stock market um, problems, and uh, GDP dropped, and all sorts of um, factors. But if you take gold and silver over years, it will be good representative. Because zakah is actually year to year. So you will notice that more or less the price of gold re represent the price of all the commodities and goods and things. Any more questions? So if your wife wants to ask about jewelry, no, you don't pay unless you want to copy Mazhab Hanafi. 
You can copy other mazahib because the majority here, the three of them say you don't pay in jewelry. So that's I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very interesting because I, I didn't know that. We've always been paying because jewelry in this country, although, you know, you've got bangles and stuff, you wouldn't wear it because it's not a common thing to uh, wear. So you store it uh, in your locker. And we've been paying uh, on juries, uh, sorry, on juries all, you know, the, all the time over the years. The, our scholars actually, they took it obviously from the Hadith. It's all backed mm. by the Hadith. So it's not their guess. But when you come to this life and this uh, time, mm. we went, uh, we wanted to buy, my wife liked a, a set of necklace and bracelets in Istanbul. And he was going to charge three times the amount of gold in it. So if we bought it, we didn't buy it, obviously. If we bought it, we would be paying 300% of the price. So when you come to pay the car, you pay the car for how, how much gold worth or how much you paid for it. But if you want to go and sell it, they will only give you how much gold in it. Like I said, when we went, sold the necklace, there's five carats of diamond in it but they didn't pay us a penny for the diamond. So although we paid so much money for the diamond, but luckily when we bought it, it the gold was cheap. When we sold it, the gold was uh, expensive. So we made some money on it. Uh, it's not we made some money, the value of the money dropped. <laughs> so yes, we collected more cash, but in value less than when we bought it. But anyway, that's the gold. Uh, SubhanAllah, Sharia is built in a way that it's valid Till uh, day of judgment. It's not by Allah. He knows what's going to happen. And he made, uh, accommodated that within the rules. The cattle, you only pay on cattle if it is freely fed. So you think if you have 10 cows on a farm and you grow your own grass to feed them, you pay nothing at all. But if you are, they are fed by grass grown by Allah, rains drop and the land belongs to nobody and they're grazing there you pay um, you pay the cow on it um because that's the that's the rules you might you might say well, why is that but this is the rules you're not wasting it um you're not spending any money on feeding them they're buying they're eating food for free now when you come also to agriculture um also five percent if you um uh, water them and 10% if you don't. They're just watered by Allah. There's a lot of trees you have. You just go and collect the crops. So you pay 10%. But you pay 5%, not 25 And agriculture is completely different. And the farmers, when you go to farm, you will find that um, they get good uh, good return. Um, you know, the, um, the one seed gives you 700 seeds. So you could get good return from agriculture. This is why it is uh, 5%. While the hard end money, uh, you pay less on it. This is, subhanAllah, this is different than the uh, tax. The tax system is unfair at all because uh, 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 the traders who earn money very easily and um, business people, they pay uh, similar to the one who work nine to five, Monday to Friday, will shift to whatever. Once you go break certain level, you pay more tax on it. While in, uh, in Islam, how hard it took you to make the money. If it was hard work to earn the money, you pay 2.5%. If it is, you know, agriculture and um, cattle and things, you pay uh, more. Because you didn't put effort to, to get it. So Sharia is uh, well structured by the, the creator. And you don't pay on everything you own as well. Just... Uh, you own 10 houses worth 20 millions, but you only pay on the rent. But if you have 10 houses, you keep selling and buying, selling and buying, but there's a lot of high turnover during the year. You're likely to make far much more money than if you are sitting on, you know, a tenant. It's known if you buy and sell houses, you make more money than if you are renting houses. And you, the, the multimillionaires are those who actually buy big properties and then sell it and buy another one and sell it. Any more questions? Before we, we might be cut off suddenly because the 40 minutes already yeah. gone.